Uh, it's six minutes after nine o'clock. Good morning and uh, welcome. Last night was the Romantic Novelist Association's annual awards and two of our writers were nominated. Liz Harris is from uh, Watlington. She was nominated for her book, A Bargain Struck, and Carol McGrath from uh, Launton near, uh, near Bicester for her historical romantic uh, novel. Uh, they were both nominated for Best Historical Romantic Novels, but you missed out this time. Good morning to you both. Good morning, Phil. Good morning, Phil. So that, 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 the first one was Liz. Say hello yes. again, Liz. Hello, Phil. It's lovely to be here. Thank you for inviting me to come. And uh, Carol, hello to you. And hello to you. So and I thank did, you. For I didn't get the, uh, the name of your uh, your book there, Carol. My book is called The Handfasted Wife. The hand. What's that? A, a hand, the <laughs> hand fasted wife. Well, hand fasting was the traditional form of marriage in the 11th century changing whenever the church came and interfer interfered in marriage. It was legally binding and the marriage would happen in the Thanes Hall. Um, property would be exchanged and um, uh, vows would be taken. It just was outside of the church. But of course, once the church insisted on marriage being um, connected with the church and uh, marriage is held in the church porch and then a ceremony in the church afterwards, um, things changed and it meant that King Harold of England, um, Harold of Hastings fame, was able to set aside his lovely wife, whom he was supposed to have been so adoring of um, for 20 years, was able to set her aside in favour of a political marriage in 1066 to mm -hmm. unite north and south of the country in the face of invasion. So before so, we went into churches and confetti and all the rest of it, it was done on a handshake and an exchange of property? Well, I think there was a very pretty ceremony in front of the whetstone in the hall um, where they shop and their, their swords and their knives and, and so on and so forth. Okay. And it was, it was a very, I mean, they feasted and, and it was, a, it was well, actually a, a legal <laughs> ceremony. Yeah, they feasted and there was probably a fight. Oh, yes. So well, yours I'm sure in, would have been, yours yes. set in the 11th century. Yeah. Yes. How about yours, Liz? Mine is set in Wyoming, 1887. It was an important year in the history of Wyoming and the Open Range, and it's a story of um, a homesteading family, but second generation. A man, a widower, who's got a daughter about to start school who can no longer help around the house. His wife had died a year earlier, and, in romantic fiction, he needs a wife, and he advertises. And Eleanor Sullivan has reason for wanting to leave her area of Nebraska and she very much wants a husband and family, she answers his ad. But obviously, all is not straightforward. Things don't go well. All right. No. Um, let's, so we, we, Sarah uh, Dumbbell and I have done a dramatic reading of an excerpt from A Bargain Struck by Watlington's own Liz Harris. Ladies and gentlemen, here it is. Take off your bonnet and come now, he repeated, a trace of impatience in his voice. She didn't move. He walked across the room to her. She put her hand quickly to the crown of the bonnet. I think it would be better if I kept my hat on, she said. She could hear her voice shaking. To make it slightly less noticeable, not every day of course, but today, until she's more used to me, to the way I look. I've been thinking about this and I believe it would be wiser. She looked at the floor and bit her lower lip. He was silent for a moment. She sensed him staring down at her. And I think differently, he said at last, quietly but firmly. Positioning himself squarely in front of her, he removed her hand from the bonnet, untied the bow beneath her chin, and let the yellow ribbons hang loose. She caught hold of the ribbons and inched back from him. I think it would be better if I kept my hat on. <laughs> <laughs> A very interesting picture. People normally talk about socks on. What makes a good a romantic novel, Liz Harris? I think the same thing as makes a good novel. If you read a novel, you want to read about strong characters, you want a really interesting, good storyline, no sense of padding, something that makes you want to turn page after page after page, you can't put it down, and you want to feel satisfied at the end. That is true of every single novel. But when you get something that is a romantic novel, you would expect perhaps something in terms of a happy ending. Um, that doesn't mean to say it has to be formulaic, it doesn't have to be predictable, it can be very, very different. All romantic novels, it's a broad church. There are many different kinds. But I think we would think at the end that you would feel satisfied, happy, uplifted, and your two partners would be united. Carol McGrath, what, 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 um, what would you add, what would you add to that? What, add what's the difference between a romantic novel and any other sort of novel? What's special about, what's different about a romantic novel? Well, I think that th there has to be a romance in it, a central romance in it, that 
drives the story um, in some way through to the to the end, with perhaps the um, the impediments, the, um, the uh, obstacles, the, the obstacles, the problems, because a, a reader does want to. Um, you know, wants to turn the page, as Liz says, quite rightly, but the reader also doesn't want it to be an easy romance. Yeah, there yeah, has a to be romance problems. in it. There has it's to be a story. Yeah. So it's a story, story girl, um, they get together way, and that's it. Exactly. To the, to the I end. differ with Liz about the end the, of a romantic um, novel. I don't think it's necessary for it to be the, um, satisfactory, um, um, the, the you know, the happy problems. ending necessarily. Oh, I think the ending can be poignant. It can be a compromise. Um, it it can be something else, and it, it can be. Um, I think it has to be satisfying in in the sense that that the reader has to feel happy that that was the right ending for that book. But I don't think it necessarily has to be the classic happy ending. Yeah, and they walk off into the, into and they the sunset. Walk, I mean, to think of Anna Karenina, a terrific romantic novel. Mm -hmm. um, not necessarily a happy ending, of course. Who reads these books? Is it, is it, I mean, a I, lot I, of people. I presume it's women. Um, and men also. My husband loved a bargain struck, I have to say. And he's not just saying it because he's my husband and I didn't pay him to say it. And he would still have his dinners cooked if he didn't say it. Um, I think you just have to look at the numbers. Every single year, the numbers of romantic fiction books that are sold goes up. And I think it's partly a sign of the times. If you think about the sort of movies that came out post-war, they were all feel-good MGMs because people want to escape and to feel happy. And to a certain extent, you see that as our life becomes more complex, more technological, Romantic fiction answers something that people want to believe is going to happen in their lives. Will I be happy? Will I find the right person? And we all want this little bit of escapism, but we obviously want it done well. And I think we have dreams, and romantic fiction, to a certain extent, fulfills our dreams, and we hope that this can come true for us. Okay. So more and more people are buying them. So Carol McGrath, we've, 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 we're, we're agreed that it's, it's, they're not to be formulaic, but there is a formula. There is yes. a man, and there is a woman, Absolutely. and there are problems. Yes. Right? So uh, for a good romantic novel... I mean, I, I heard that Mills and Boone uh, had, ha, have a, a set of criteria. Oh, you're, you're pulling a face. Why are you pulling a face, Karen? No, I just... <laughs> they're very difficult to write, Mills and Boone books. Yeah, because... What, because... because you have to write to, as you say, a, a criteria. And there are certain things that they want you to have in those books. Um, and, you know, the writer often wants to put in something of their own selves mm. into the book. But and that might that. not necessarily be the kind of thing that Mills and Boone wants. So it, it, is, it is quite difficult, evidently, to write a Mills and Boone book. I don't think I could write a Mills and Boone book. So tell me about the, 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 the male heroes. Not necessarily in, in, in the, the books that you brought in, but, but, but generally. Does, does, does the male hero, does, does he have to be square-jawed and barrel-chested? No. Um, which would, would you like well, well, Carol was pulling the face. Why were you pulling a face out? Well, I absolutely don't think he does have to be that way. I think he has to be somebody whom the reader will want to follow, whom the reader will be interested in his journey, even if he is a bit of a bad bit of a penny wolf. or a oh, bit of a worse. Oh, he changes throughout the story. Now, I think perhaps. Um, he doesn't necessarily have to change drastically throughout the story, but something has to Get a bit move of iron forward. Into his soul. Yes, yeah, I mean, you can't start but he a wuss and then have... end a wuss. No, he can't start a wuss and end a wuss, and he, he necessarily. Uh, I don't think really the classic handsome, um, hunky hero is necessarily the answer either. I think it's interesting to see how a story develops, and that's one of the things that makes a reader want to read on. How will that hero change, and how will the relationship change between the hero and the heroine? Okay, um, uh, we're running out of time. Liz Harris, tell me about the, the heroine. Does she always have to be yielding? There, we, that's a, there was a lot of business there with the hat. Yes, the but there's a reason for that. This isn't sort of, um, well, it isn't kind of feminine modesty. There is a reason for it. She's about to meet his daughter for the first time, and there are problems. She's concerned I how the daughter will react. I think it would be better react. if I kept the hat yes. on. Yes. <laughs> So, no, I think um, one today in contemporary fiction, you look for feisty heroines, and I think also in romantic fiction, you want a heroine who has beliefs, principles, and 
um, is quite strong at heart. But you also want her to be fun and to be pleasant to be with. Just as a writer spends eight months writing a book, we want to live with people we like, and the readers are going to spend a long time reading our books. They want to travel a journey with characters they're interested in. Um, and I think the yielding lady of the bodice rippers of the past is, that is a thing rather gone. Oh, right, we're running out of time, but I've got so many questions. Um, uh, uh, Carol, Explain to me what is the difference between a romantic novel and smut and a rom-com. Oh, my goodness. Uh, well, a romantic novel... <laughs> that's a difficult question, Phil. A romantic what, novel... Do, do, it's keep... closing the bedroom a door when you close it and when you open yeah, it. Yeah, a, oh, a romantic novel um, has got an element of romance in it, uh, a romance between a, a man and a woman, somewhere in that story, Just driving that story. And, and they can—I mean, they, they can be classics. I mean, look at look at Jane Austen, and look at—I um, uh, mean, lots of writers, even today's writers like Tracy Chevalier. Look, look at those romantic novels. I mean, they're not predictable. Okay. And they're well, they're beautifully written. Listen, final question, final question, uh, um, briefly, if you wouldn't mind. Um, Sue, we'll start with you. Why do you write this? I write, you mean this type of book, yes. romantic why do you fiction? Write romantic fiction. Yes, I've also written other things as well. But, why but do you like um, this? I find it tremendously satisfying um, to take a man and a woman and possibly to put problems in their way, but set in a background that I love. I love America. I went to Wyoming to finish my research. It is a very romantic background. So I set a novel in a background that I love with characters I really like. And when you get a man and a woman, normally romance tends to happen. And how about you, how about you uh, Carol? Why, why do you write? Write romantic fiction? Well, I would not say The Handfested Wife was a classic romantic fiction book in that um, there is romance in it and there is the relationship between um, Edith Swanneck, Harold's common law wife, and Harold. Um, Harold dies very shortly into the book, but then there are other romance possibilities. So, why, presented do, why are you writing her. this? So, why I write it is because I think that um, I think romance actually. Mm, I mean, we all are interested in romance. All right, lovely. And sausage. romance happens, and it really <laughs> happens. I mean, just like shit happens, romance happens. Oh, oh, oh my oh, goodness! Oh, okay, you've been doing so well. And this is not the kind of language you expect from a romantic novelist. Please apologise. I apologise to our listeners. Thank profusely. you. Oh, 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 Carol McGrath, she's a foul mouthed one. And then Liz Harris, uh, thank you both for, for joining us. Uh, oh, thank you very much for uh, We're talking about what makes a good romantic novel.